Next, we're going to cover the with options method. This is one of Active Support's core extensions and is added right on the object class. This is a great method to look at because it's really useful in day-to-day -day coding and it has an interesting implementation. Here's a quick example of how you'd use this method, which I'm going to lift right from the comments above it in the source. Let's say we've got a model that looks like this. As you can see, we've got some duplication here. We're passing in the same options to each has many method. So let's refactor this. We'll use the with options method like so. Now, the dependent destroy option is no longer duplicated. With options takes a hash of options and yields a receiver, which we're calling a SOCH. When you call any method on this receiver, with options will merge in the hash containing dependent destroy into the end of the argument list. Then it passes on the original method call plus the newly merged set of arguments to whatever was originally self. The end result is that the options are included on every method call without duplicating them. Now let's see how this is implemented. Taking a look at the bottom of the file, we see that this method is passing self and options into a new active support option merger. We need to pass self in here because the with options receiver is just a proxy. It needs to forward all the method calls it receives somewhere else after it merges in the options. Since all the work is getting done in the option merger, let's look in there next. But first, Notice that the proxy we create in option merger is getting yielded from this method. In the example we looked at earlier, the proxy was the value called a soch in the block. Here we are in the option merger class. Let's take this line by line, beginning with the require. Normally, we'll skip over requires, but it's worth pointing this one out one time because it's an example of active support's modularity. Every file in Active Support explicitly requires its dependencies like this. This allows you to cherry pick single classes or modules for use in non Rails projects. The option merger will require just its dependencies. You don't have to load the rest of Active Support. This is true for all the code you'll come across in this gem, so don't hesitate to grab pieces for use in other projects. Next, Let's hop down to the body of the class. Notice that the first thing it does is undefine all its instance methods, with just a few exceptions. This is a common technique when creating a class that wants to handle dynamic methods through method missing. By undefining all but the most essential methods, we ensure that there will be as few name collisions as possible. The few instance methods that we don't undefine are the minimum required to keep things from blowing up. Now we hit initialize. Notice that we're storing away something called context. Recall that with options calls new with context set to self. This is so that after we merge in the options hash, we can pass the method call on to whatever was originally self. Except for the new options, it's just like you called the method outside the with options block. The second thing we're saving away is options. This is a hash containing the options that we want to send to any method called within the with options block. Finally, we reach the guts of the class, method missing. There's actually a surprising amount to talk about on these few lines, so we'll work our way through it slowly. If you get confused, just back up and try listening again. To help keep things straight, let's refer to a specific example. We'll use this one we discussed earlier where we refactored several has many calls to all include the dependent destroy option. For clarity's sake, I've reduced the number of calls within the with options block to just this single has many customers. So within the block, we're calling a soch dot has many customers. Remember, a soch is an instance of the option merger class yielded by the with options method. A soch doesn't define has many, so we end up in its method missing. Method missing will receive parameters of method 
which is has many, and arguments, which is an array that contains only the symbol customers. So now we've hit line 21. The last element of arguments isn't a proc, so we'll jump to the else clause on line 25. This line is appending the results of the ternary operator to the arguments array. Let's dive into that ternary. First, we check if the last argument responds to to hash. Notice we're calling to hash instead of to hsh. You may have seen that code sometimes calls to s and sometimes to str, or to a and to ary. In every case, the shorter method, like to s, means do your best to give me a representation of this object as a string. You can define 2s on nearly any object, because there's usually a way to reasonably represent something as a string. For example, 2s is defined on arrays, and it just concatenates the contents of the array together into a string. However, you only define 2str on objects that are so much like a string that they can be used anywhere a string would be. Since arrays aren't enough like strings to consider them equivalent, arrays do not define the toStr method. You might be wondering why we don't just ask if the last argument is an instance of the hash class. In general, Rubyists prefer to ask an object what it responds to instead of its class, because this allows for more flexibility. We may have written an object that is almost exactly like a hash, but isn't a subclass of the hash class. Our new object would work fine in this method, but if the code explicitly checked the class of our object, we wouldn't be able to use it here. It's actually quite common to create objects and classes that are hash-like or array-like, so in general, good Ruby code simply asks what methods an object responds to instead of its class. Okay, let's get back to what the code is doing. It says that if the last argument responds to to hash, we're going to deep merge options and that hash. Here's a quick example to show why we're calling active supports deep merge instead of Ruby's standard merge. Let's say the original last argument looked like this. And the options we want to merge in look like this. Plain old options.merge arg overwrites the value associated with the foo key. Deep merge recursively merges those hashes together, and we get both sets of options in the final hash. We need to handle this in case either options or the passed in arguments contain nested hashes with the same key. Okay, back to the code. Finally, we've reached the else clause of our ternary operator. If the last argument isn't a hash, we'll just duplicate the options hash, so it can be appended onto arguments. Dupe is called here in case arguments later gets modified. If we didn't duplicate options, some code could later mutate the arguments array and change the value stored in at options. Naturally, this would be bad. So now we fully understand line 25. If the last argument is hash-like, we pop it off, merge in options, and shove it back on the arguments array. If the last element isn't hash-like, we simply shove a copy of options onto the end of it. Finally, we hit line 28 and make use of that context we stored away earlier. Now that the options have been merged in, we've got to pass the call on to whatever was self when we called with options. We do this by calling the underscore underscore send method on context. The effect of this line is to call the original method with our merged in options. It's just like with options wasn't used at all. Everything is completely transparent. Now that we've got the hang of a standard call, Let's go back and check out lines 21 through 23. These lines are here to handle the situation when the last argument passed in is a proc, 
You might want to do this if you were calling a method with options that you wanted evaluated right when that method was called, instead of when the Rails app first boots. If you were passing in time.now, for example. With options handles this case by wrapping another proc around your original one. Then, when the new proc gets evaluated, we'll call the original proc, take the results of running it, and merge in at options. If all this can seems confusing, don't worry too much about it. I've never actually needed this functionality in practice, so I'd say it's safe to skip. However, if you're the kind of person that has to understand what's going on, I recommend you check out option mergers tests for an example of how the Lambda functionality might get used.